Although there have been much debate of when exactly the first crossbows were invented in China, the first, the very first crossbows may have been a very simple trigger or didn't even need a trigger, where you basically have a wooden plank and, and you put the string on the end of the plank and you lift the string up. This method of trigger design does not require any complicated tools or design, and I actually made my first crossbow this way. You just put the string on the end of the crossbow and you flick it. Field archaeology that uncovered the first bronze crossbow mechanisms dating back around 600 BCE. It was a grave burial at Chufu, the ancient capital of Lu. Once these bronze crossbow mechanisms start to appear in the archaeological context after 600 BC, these findings are very common. Most of your legs is actually your strongest muscles. And by using the crossbow, you can span the bow with your strongest muscles. So let's say around 300 pounds is a fairly decent number. Contrary to late European medieval steel crossbows, the Chinese crossbows had a much longer power stroke since the prods were not made of steel, but rather similar materials to the bows at the time. This also means less draw weight, which means you don't need heavy spanning devices and you can span these things relatively quickly. A late European steel windless crossbow would take at least, you know, 40 seconds to span. But by spanning it with your legs, ah, you, maybe a few seconds, I'd say 10 seconds, depending on the draw weight. So, for example, if you're an archer drawing an 80 pound bow at 30 inch draw length, if you were a crosswoman, you could span 200 pounds with your legs at similar draw lines, maybe 25 inch draw lines, and you will still be producing a lot more power than the hand bow in theory, at the expense of a slower rate of fire. So let's talk briefly about physics. Basically, work equals FD. If the force is unchanged, um, the work done is actually similar to a triangle. In real life, the, the curves are, are, there's actually a curve to it, but for simplicity's sake, we're just gonna use a triangle. It's easy math. So basically work equals half of the draw weight multiplied by power stroke, in addition to additional factors. If it's recurved, the bow is a little bit more bumped over here. Keep in mind, this does not factor in the arrow at all. So far, it's just the amount of work which, which gets transferred to energy, a kinetic energy from the arrow, but that's a totally different story uh, when it comes down to arrows. But for the bow itself, the work equals half the draw weight of the bow multiplied by power stroke. Power stroke is basically your draw length minus the brace height. That's enough physics for today. But basically, Chinese crossbows are a lot more efficient than uh, European steel crossbows. Now, keep in mind, I did not say all European crossbows because earlier European crossbows are similar to Chinese crossbows where they had a longer draw length, especially with wooden prods. But later, steel European crossbows where the draw weight gets ridiculous to 1,200 pounds, uh, those ones are much less efficient. So why do, why do the Europeans even bother making something that's so inefficient? Well, there's so many factors. Todd does a pretty good video on it, but I personally think it is a much more compact bow. You know, it, these these massive Chinese crossbows are more like artillery pieces, where it's, you know, it, it's not convenient in a tight formation. But these steel crossbows, you could, uh, you know, go into really tight corners. Um, so they, they all have their own niche. In fact, the later Chinese Ming Dynasty crossbows are made with shorter prods and sometimes laminated bamboo and cheaper prods as well. So I think the Chinese used a mix of various prods, um, recurved, composite, or non-composites, uh, maybe even static recurves, who knows? But um, the principle here is the earlier Chinese crossbows were long draw length ones, so they had a longer power stroke. Now let's look at historical records uh, to verify some of the things I've said. Just how powerful a crossbow could be is glimpsed in the excavated Chuyin slips from which records of crossbow maintenance was kept. In general, crossbows were categorized by draw weights of 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10 plus stone, with each Chinese stone unit being the modern of 65-ish, 
pounds. So the majority of the crossbows had a draw weight of around 390 pounds. The ancient hand crossbow of around 390 pounds has about the same power as Todd's 1,250 pound steel crossbow. Chinese crossbows have always been a fascinating subject to me and I want to create my first prototype and I need your help. I need sponsors. Um, it is very expensive to make such a prototype, especially um, the trigger system I don't have much experience with. I'm hoping there's people that uh, can help me with um, designing the trigger, following the blueprints, because I'm not really skilled with metalworking. Um, I have a few prods. I have a prod that's around 240 pounds. These are all prods I'm interested to use. I really want to create a Chinese crossbow replica to show the true power because if you look online, there's very little replicas of a true Chinese crossbow. We're talking 390 pound draw weight at around 19 inch power stroke. Very few have made something like that. So I, I actually haven't found any person making that. So I do want to make a crossbow similar to that. I have a longbow with the with the draw weight of 240 pounds at a draw length of 32 inches that could somewhat simulate the you know the rough number but I, I kind of want to use horn sinew prod but they're very expensive so I might be ending up with fiberglass prod that's a recurve fiberglass prod so if anybody's interested to contribute in this project whether with your expertise or anything please contact me because I want to make a true Chinese hand crossbow